as we start to look at the season, obviously it's a, a, a you know, very exciting time for the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, you know, when we reflect back on the off season, there were uh, certainly some things we were hoping to do that we weren't able to accomplish. But you know, our number one goal was to obviously add a catcher. We were fortunate enough to do that. Um, and then uh, a lot of things sort of unfolded or transpired that necessarily didn't break the way we had hoped. But, you know, net net, as we start to look at, at Jupiter and, and starting to really think about the 2023 season, we, we really are excited about what we have. Um, we know this was a talented team. And uh, when you look at our roster and, and sort of wonder, like, well, what could you have augmented or what should you have augmented or how should we have thought about that, you know, I, I, I really sort of, We'll, we'll have everybody circle back to when you think about performance and, and how people played or if they were injured. You know, the, the key for the St. Louis Cardinals as you think about 2023 is really going to be who, who, who are we? And, and what I mean by that is, is what is Tyler O'Neill? What is Dylan Carlson? You know, what are we going to get out of Jack Flaherty? And if these guys perform to the expectations that we believe they're capable of, we think we're going to be a, a very talented and competitive and compelling team to watch. So, um, you know, these are these are the the bets we made, um, but we're certainly excited about the group we have. Um, obviously, we know we we have a great core when you think about Goldie and Nolan, but it's it's really what's around that. And you know, I think you also c can when you think about that roster, there are emerging stars coming and. Um, and that's not even really to start to dig into what we think we have at the minor league system or at the prospect level. But when you look at that prospect group, there are some younger players that are starting to put themselves on that major league radar. When you think about somebody like a Jordan Walker and what his impact might be, or a Graceffo, McGreevy, to name a few. And so that's really what's going to go into to how we think about the 23 season unfolding. And so... Um, you guys might not share my same enthusiasm or optimism for this season, but I, I, I promise you it's, it's going to be a fun team to watch and, and one that's going to be very competitive. So who wants to lead us off this year? I was going to go to, I was going to go sports cat or sports writer of the year, but I, 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 I just, that's okay. You don't have one, do you? Okay. You go first. You should go first. Well, I think uh, we were in some negotiations that uh, obviously uh, when you think about negotiations, right, the proxy to when you get something where you win is um, you're probably the highest bidder or you were more attractive or, or something. I do think like like one of the things we were looking for was, was a, a left-handed bat, a veteran bat, um, but I don't think we were a very compelling team to come to because – when you, when you look at our roster, there is competition for who that might be. And I think some people just did not find that all that interesting. And, and so, you know, typically in negotiations, it really comes down to sort of money and years. But there's also that factor of, of you know, how do I fit in as that player? And so I think we were having a hard time really convincing that this was, you know, an impactful type role given the competition we have. So there were things like that. And obviously we were, you know, kicking the tires on a few other things to, to, to say the least. But, you know, I think a lot of a lot of people had us like connected to the shortstop market, the starting pitching market. And, and candidly, we really weren't all that active in that. Now that might be a strategic mistake. And, you know, in hindsight, six months from now or a year from now, we can look back at that and say, okay, we probably should have. Or, you know, our hope is, is that we are right, and, and it won't be something that um, we regret. But, you know, I feel like the effort and what we put into the, the offseason was real. Um, I can promise you it was, uh, you know, it was a very busy one in the sense of, of effort, but, you know, the, the return is what it is. But, again, not overly concerned about it because I really think we have a good club and we have a lot of talent on this team and a lot of team, talent coming. All right, Johnny. You bench coach. Last Saturday, <laughs> um, yeah, I, look, I, I, I've known Matt a long time and, you know, have the utmost respect for him. You, you know, when you find out someone is, is, is stepping down from your coaching staff in the second week of January, you know, candidly, it's not ideal. 
But, um, you know, I came in my office last Sunday. I went through, you know, lack of a, a, a modern phrase, the Rolodex, to try to figure out, like, you know, what possibly could we do? Um, so what we did was we explored, like, potential internal moves or promotions, um, what that might do, and a domino effect if you, if you did that. And then we also were just trying to explore what um, – outside options we'd have. And, and so, you know, I think we were very fortunate to, to end up where we did. Um, Joe McEwing is, is someone that has experience. He has history with the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, anybody that, that knows him or has been around him, you know, he, he really does sort of exemplify everything the Cardinals stand for. And, you know, if you think back to his early career, he's definitely somebody that was a, a Kissel disciple. You know, he, so he learned from that sort of traditional group um, of people that we, we do try to surround ourselves with. So, um, you know, net net, I, I really feel like we're, we're thrilled that we could end up with Joe given the short notice and, and the fact that, you know, look, three and a half weeks, we're down in Jupiter. So, um, you know, beggars can't be choosers, but I can tell you that as far as is coming out on the positive side of this, I think we did. I mean, I think the simple thing there is 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 to see that power, or see that consistency, right? When you're a middle of the order hitter, are you contributing as a middle of the order type of bat, right? And so, you know, taking injuries aside, and we think back to to two years ago and the season he had, he was able to put the St. Louis Cardinals on his back from time to time and carry us. When you have two players like Goldie and Nolan, you have to support that with other players, and I and I do feel like. You know, the emergence of, of Lars, for example, right? You know, he's someone that might turn into that as well. But in the meantime, we've also had the time to watch somebody like Dylan Carlson or Tyler O'Neill. And I will say going into this year, expectations are high. But, you know, the key is obviously being healthy. And when you're looking from just a pure productivity standpoint, it's it's power, it's, it's being able to hit doubles, and it's, uh, you know, try to mitigate your strikeouts. But if the trade-off is an increase in power, that might be a fair trade-off right now. Well, when you talk about veteran left-handed bats that might be available, there are similar players that you brought in last spring that are still available on the free agent market. Are you all at a point now where you feel like what you have internally may be better than what remains on the market in that area? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, obviously, you, you never you never say you're done in this game because, um, you know, I've been doing this a long time. You can always spend money, right? There's it's 12 months in a, in a year, and uh, if, you, if you really think about it, there's almost like every one, single one of those months you can spend money and, and try to do something. So, you know, I think as, as we look at this, I, I mean, obviously it's an important weekend for us. We get a big health update on all our players. We get a status check on where we are, and it's a face-to-face. -face. It's not over the phone. It's not a Zoom, so it's, it's pretty meaningful. And if something comes out of this weekend where we don't feel like we need where we need to be, then we still have three weeks to address it. Or obviously, in spring training, you can always make a trade. This early, has anything popped health wise so far with the guys that have been there? Actually, I don't think anybody's been seen because we. I just walked through the training room, but um, their first client I think is at uh, ten forty five, and uh, but I told them I don't even want to talk to them. So <laughs> there's that. Follow up question. Same question, but basically related to the bullpen. Could you see an additional bullpen? Um, you know, historically, we never rule out adding bullpen help at, at any time of year, right? So I would say that that we would be open to that, and we would, uh, you know, we'll still continue to explore that market. I do sort of, I, I mean, we really haven't touched on our bullpen or, or like, you know, pitching specific so far today, but like, I really like our depth. I mean, like, you know, there's guys that give you a lot of flexibility, and when you think about flexibility when you're building a bullpen. I always think about it in sort of um, maybe three-pronged, right? The ability to use somebody for an inning or more, right? That gives you flexibility in a person or a pitcher. The ability to um, option a player. Um, and the ability to have a pitcher that can actually start a game versus go to the bullpen. And when you look at the names and, and the faces in that group, there are a lot of guys that, that can actually check all three of those boxes. And um, so from that standpoint, we're, we're really excited about what we have down there. Are 
Yeah, I think that's a fair question, the WBC. Um, you, you know, the, the baseball as a whole, so it's thinking, thinking you know, globally of, of MLB, like our, our, our approach to this is we are all advocates for getting this off the ground, keeping it going, building some momentum so it's an impactful tournament. Um, I think most people that sit in my seat would tell you it, it is, uh, it's tougher to manage. Um, but, you know, the way I'm looking at, at 2023 is, is more with that opportunistic hat on. And what I mean by that is when you think about, obviously, a lot of your key players not being there, what does that mean? That means somebody else is going to have to play, right? And when we have this emerging group of young talent they're going to get a lot of playing time in spring training. So if you're the type of person that likes watching young up-and-coming prospects, this camp's going to be for you. Um, and it's going to be a fun one because, you know, obviously Ollie and his staff are going to push these guys. We're going to see what we have. And, um, you know, as, as I always say, you know, one man's loss is another man's gain. So that's opportunity for someone else. Well, let, well, let's start with the question, will payroll go up, sure. right? And I answered yes. Has payroll gone up? Yes. Okay, now, did it go up as high as your guys' expectations? Or fans. Fans? That's the eyes of the beholder, right? Like, like, it doesn't mean that, that we weren't looking to invest in other things. We already touched on that, like some of the areas we did. Now, unfortunately, we didn't achieve that. But from the simple question, did payroll go up? Payroll has gone up. Do we have bandwidth to still add to this club throughout the year? Yes, we do. Um, is the market something that, 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 that had a, um, an adverse effect to possibly us spending? The answer is, of course, right? Um, you know, there's... there's the way we operate is we're going to invest in what we think are smart investments, prudent, but also investments that we, we understand that, that could have a backside negativity or loss. Having said that, you're still not going to just do something just to do something, and you're not going to just spend to spend. As I said earlier, you can always spend. And so I would say to our fans, look, we, we, we like our team. Like, if, if we didn't like our team, we'd be making adjustments to our team because that's how we do things here. But um, resources that are available today and resources moving forward are definitely a more than what they were in 2021, 2020, and 2019. Well, it's it's not a, a pass fail, uh, Derek. It's 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 understanding like the the value of what you're paying for, right? Simply put, you you either produce runs or you prevent runs, and you can reverse engineer on the market what you should be paying for those based on what your payroll is or your revenues are, at, relative to market. Has the market moved? Yes. So, do we need to change the uh, denominator sometime? Perhaps. And you know that's something we're looking at, but that doesn't mean you're going to simply make a decision just to appease something that we didn't really believe was going to marginally, or, or I should say, incrementally change our club or make ourselves better. Um, obviously, there's sort of two hats you wear when you're in this decision mode. There's the short view, meaning how's it going to affect our club today, versus what some of these implications might look like in the long view. And having said that, I do think the long view is something that we have to take a harder look at because clearly when you look at what was spent this offseason in those markets, you know, things are changing. Mo, you touched a lot on the free agent market. Was there anything about your explorations of the trade market that surprised you this offseason as a staff? Uh, I, think, I, th I think, you know, overall, I think the trade market was relatively slow, um, which I think, you know, for the most part, I think what you're doing or what you're seeing is, that, you know, teams are trying to remain competitive. And... 
And so maybe teams that in the past might have been more apt to trade or break their club up, um, you saw less less teams participating in that. But having said that, like, yeah, we were kicking the tires on a bunch of trades. I mean, like, we can all, you know, hark back to winter meetings. I mean, it was pretty well documented what we were trying to do. And uh, when we realized we weren't going to accomplish that, we pivoted pretty quick and went to the free agent market. Well, you guys look for a catcher. A lot of the trade ads were, were steering you toward free agency in addition to Russell Wilson. When you guys talked about the idea of, do you have a starting pitcher? What was that conversation like, and how did you guys get to the point where you are comfortable now with, with what you have going into spring? Yeah, I don't recall us like having like, a deep conversation of starting pitching. Like, like For example, like, there, there were some things we, we discussed where obviously there were some pitchers on the market that we think would have been impactful and if you added them to our rotation would have been a difference maker. Um, you know, unfortunately, we were not able to sign one of them. But overall, when you look at our, our rotation right now, we're pretty excited about it. And, and I also, as I, as I said earlier, there are some young guys in that bullpen that also started last year. I mean, if you think about a guy like a Palante, Libertor, and others that are hoping Woodford or hoping, you know, maybe to get that opportunity. But right now, we're six deep with probably four or five other pitchers trying to compete for innings. And, you know, a name we, we obviously didn't speak a whole lot about last year and, and for, for reasons of injuries and, and so forth was, you know, Verhagen. And he's somebody that like is expecting to come into camp, get innings, and compete. Um, you know, he feels healthy this year. I, I don't think he ever felt 100% when he came into camp last year. And I think it's similarly with somebody like a Stephen Matz, right? Like I think like last year was such an odd year with the labor situation, what guys were doing to prep for when that camp finally did open. I think you know, and then it was that that real rush to get ready for 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 the season. I'm not sure everybody was able to do it at the, their own proper pace. So, you know, th there are guys that, that I do think, when you think about what happened last year to what we're hoping to see this year, there should be a change in their trajectory. So you talked about pitching. Oh, I'm sorry. Just one you guys are the same company, so. <laughs> Just on the, on the clarification on the payroll conversation from after the season ended, is it, in your eyes, was it a misunderstanding of the comment, or was it a change in direction based off of some of the changes in the market? Uh, no, I, it, it was factual. It went up. I, I don't know what else to say. You said it, it didn't go up. It may have not gone up as much as Alex. No, I, I, it didn't go up as much as you expected. I guess no, I, th I think we, we, uh, we could have spent more, but we're not just going to spend to spend. Okay. Yeah. My guess is by the season's end, it'll probably be spent. I mean, it could, but it could also slow down because I think once people get in the camp, they're sort of like, you know, and, and when you don't see t players on your team that are normally there, it's, it's hard to really make judgment or make decisions on what you may do. So I, I do think, like, look, yesterday was the arbitration exchange. It's a very busy day in our industry. Um, I think it was one of the longest days in arbitration history in terms of exchange. I think it was almost midnight last night when we finally got the numbers. But, you know, I think everybody's sort of going to take a deep breath after yesterday or this past week. And then, you know, I think uh, people then will re, you know, put their energy back into their clubs beginning next week. When you strip away uh, the Adam Wainwright mystique and history and just look at this human being pitching every fifth day, what, what, do you, what do you expect from this guy? What realistically can he do to help your rotation? Well, expectations are high, right? You don't you don't sign someone if you don't have expectations for someone that's really going to compete and contribute. I think anytime you ever want to bet against Adam Wainwright, you're probably making a bad bet, right? I mean, he's proved us all wrong for years. He's a he's someone that um, works extremely hard. His preparation's real. It's it's someone that um, understands exactly what it takes to perform at a high level here. And um, you know, I think. Uh, we're, we're lucky to have someone like him because he's great in the clubhouse. He's uh, a good mentor for young players. And, you know, I, I was thinking back to last year, like, was this going to happen or not happen? But, you know, I'm certainly grateful he's back with us because, you know, he's just uh, – you guys all know him. He's, he's an amazing person. And, uh, 
you know, he certainly makes our team better. And from that leadership, what he brings to inside that clubhouse, that's important. And when you, when you look at the, uh, the playoffs in general from last season, new format and everything, now that it's over, you had a couple months, are there any trends from this past postseason about is the calculus changes or how do you win in the playoffs now there's a new round and things like that? Yeah, I guess don't blow a lead and late in the game and, you know, change your trajectory. I mean, like, no, there's not, like, you know, you got to get out, right? And, you know, you, you think back to, to game one, what happens if we win that game? Like, who knows? Like, there, there's, like, it, it's always hard to, like, rewrite history when you can't. But, you know, I, I, I think our club was built to have success. You know, unfortunately, we didn't that day. And, and, and things happen, and that's part of October. When you don't have a lot of starting pitching signed beyond this season, how much of a concern is that? And are you looking to maybe do some long-term deals with, with guys you already have on staff? I think it's a very fair question, and I don't have a great answer at the moment. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe to, to start with, am I concerned? Of course. You, you know, obviously um, you, you like to have some certainty as you start to think about that long view. But I do think it creates some opportunity for us, and um, we're not going to rule out any type of future contract extension talks or anything like that. I will tell you, we're not engaged in any at the moment. We really were just trying to focus on yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, we got through it. And as we uh, approach spring training or in spring training, um, we'll certainly revisit it. Uh, another very good question. Is it's a very important question? Um, my confidence in Jack is is probably at an all time high. I, I think uh, he's had a really good off season. His preparation has been, you know, very strategic. He is, um, I think, in a really good spot, and you know, I think he understands the importance of this year. And so, um, you know, obviously, we all saw a glimpse of what what he's capable of doing in in, in nineteen, and and it was really good. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I think the key is for him to be healthy. I think it's, it's you know, having his, his preparation and the ability to, to repeat that is, is obviously important. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about what we're seeing with him. So, yeah, just maybe a first a high-level response to, to arbitration. We're not a team that goes very often, right? We, 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 we tend to try to find a resolution as, as, as best we can to avoid the hearing room. Um, I think arbitration as a whole is, is you know, not really a healthy element of our game because it, you know, it sort of pits player versus management and, and vice versa. And, you know, it just – you, know, you wish you didn't have to have that because there's enough there's enough stress in this game in this industry to, to just that just magnifies it. So, yeah, I, I certainly am glad that you know we're not having to go to hearing with with Jack Flaherty. I mean, especially on a year that's you know so important for both sides. So, um, um, would you? Add, maybe the question is, was that a variable going into yesterday's negotiation? And I will say, absolutely. Yeah, so um, sort of a funny question, right? I think uh, we're, we're all confident what he does at short. It's uh, what he does in the batter's box. And, uh, and so uh, feedback right now, because he is working down in Jupiter daily, has been uh, extremely impressive or, or positive. You know, obviously um, there's that saying, you know, some people are 5 o'clock hitters and some people are 7.15 hitters. So um, in this case, we need him to be that 7.15 hitter. And, you know, I don't think you really know that until you start playing in games. But um, to your point, he is going to get a lot of opportunity this spring. And, uh, you know, we're pretty optimistic of what we have. Oh, for me personally. Yeah, for you personally. Oh, wow. Um, look, uh, Mr. DeWitt and I have talked about my future. 
um, in terms of what that uh, may look like. We haven't made any determination. We're going to continue to talk about that. I think, you know, when I look at, at 2023, I'm not overly focused on my contract or, or what, um, you know, 2024 looks like yet. I'm, I'm really not. But, you know, I'm excited about getting down to Jupiter. I'm excited about 2023. But, you know, clearly, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a very important franchise. Um, I understand the importance of the St. Louis Cardinals and, you know, in terms of, of how Mr. DeWitt and I work through things, um, you know, we have we have time. And uh, good news is, you know, majority of my staff is is under contract. They're they they know what's expected of them day to day. So I, I don't want to be a distraction first and foremost. And um, most importantly, I'm just looking forward to the season. Um, I would say extremely important, um, not for the fact that, oh, I'm just up there to make the club, but more importantly, to, to make a you know, positive impression with the Major League staff. I think one of the things that, that people that, that spend a lot of time in spring training, which many of these people do, they understand that the, the intimacy of spring training creates this unique relationship and opportunity to build. And so I think young players that make you know, really positive impressions or, or um, you know, show extreme work ethic or, or desire to learn really helps in their advancement. You know, in the end, you got to perform, right? That's what it comes down to. But a lot of these younger players, I think, really had great 2022 20, seasons, and now we're just building on that. Well, I think he's a modern shortstop, right? I mean, he, he runs, he's got pop, extremely, well, an elite arm. <laughs> um, I think the, the, the nuances of shortstop is just what he's working through, right? He, when you think about the game of baseball, and, and you know, all of us are spoiled, right? We, we sit here and we watch Major League Baseball, and the game looks so easy when it's played. Um, you know, if you guys want to see the game played at a high school level, I recommend you go and do that, and it's, it's different. Right, you go to a game in, in low A, it's different. And what's different about it? It's really the speed of the game, it's the crispness of the game. And these guys make it look so easy, we just assume everybody can do it. But you know, when I watch Mason Wynn play, uh, especially this past year down in Springfield, I mean, there's a lot to like, right? When you put your scat, scouting hat on, you, you, can, you can write up tools. Now it's, it's just sort of understanding the nuances of that, where to be, where to make throws, you know, positioning your feet. These are all just little things that, that guess what? It just takes time. It just takes repetition. And, uh, but to have his tool set at his age and to do it at the level he's doing is pretty special. And I'm not trying to put like an expectation on Mason Wynn. That's why I didn't answer your question. Thank you. In the lineup or protection, how would you describe his offensive bat? I'd say right now, at his age, I think he's an emerging hitter. I don't think you'd say, oh, he's a middle of a lineup hitter. But in fairness, you know, he's 20 years old, right? I mean, like, be patient a little bit. But I think what he was able to accomplish at double A at his age was pretty impressive. Well, I think the one thing you have to love about McGreevy is he's a strike thrower, right? And when you have a team that's built on defense, that, that usually tends to be a pretty good marriage. Now, you know, are there things he still has to evolve and, and do? You know, when you think about his breaking ball, when you think about um, can he find a few extra miles an hour or velo, um, that, that's all something we, we hope to see. But when you're just looking at, like, just pure performance on what he was able to do, love the fact that, that he's around the zone, love the fact that he works quick. I think these are all like attributes that tend to lead to success at higher levels. I'm going to have to close this up here pretty quick. Oh, man, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> We're on a roll. <laughs> Writer of the year. Uh, on the issue of contract extensions, just to clarify, uh, no talks with pitchers or any, any extensions? At the moment, no extension talks. Um, you know, again, I, I think 
for all people that experience like this past week and what that week looks like, it's it's you're either focused on an extension or you're just trying to get a one year deal done. And the group of nine that we were dealing with, we focused on one. When you mentioned the gritty, you talked about the strike throwing ability. 2021, that was kind of one of the themes coming out of the season, was finding guys that were making throw strikes. When you look at that back at last season, do you feel like there was a theme that you came out of the season saying, okay, this is what we need to improve for 23? Well, I think, you know, one of the things I think that, that we heard from our coaching staff was swing and miss um, and, and, and velocity. So when you think back to sort of like late last year or maybe, you know, when you're watching postseason, like the horsepower coming out of bullpens is, is real. I mean, there's, there's, there's no getting around that. Um, and so when you, when you think back to like even like that, that the Rule 5 pick we had, you know, one of the, the, the thoughts behind that was just pure horsepower. So, you know, we, we added two guys to our roster that throw 99 to 100. Now you got to throw strikes. You got to be around the zone. Um, just throwing hard does not make you a great pitcher. So, you know, our fingers are crossed that that this type of of, of skill set is something that um, we can dovetail into, you know, something we can build off of. But that was really the takeaway from the bullpen. One other thing with Gorman, his role going into this upcoming season. Do you feel like he is still going to be second base primarily? Is there other opportunities for him to move around the diamond? I would say right now he's likely going to be second base priority, but you know, clearly don't want to rule anything out. It just there's, there's still things that could happen. And, uh, you know, in his case, I was excited how he played last year. Um, obviously, there were some growing pains, but do believe he's a talented guy. I do think he's someone that one day could be a middle of the order type hitter. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes when you throw these younger players into things, you, you do need a little bit of a learning curve or a little bit of patience. And, you know, I, we had success last year as a team. Um, could we have had more success? Of course, if we had gone deeper in October. But with that success, we still had guys learning. And uh, I think that's a, a pretty positive way to, to, to think back to that year. So even though um, we didn't ultimately get to the goal we wanted to of winning the World Series, we did have young players take big steps forward. Hopefully they learned a lot. And hopefully this year it's even a bigger step moving forward.